Hello, it's Sarah, and today I'm going to be painting these two ATCs. They are two of Tracy's uh, patterns that come in this packet. Be Fierce, Fly Free, Dream Big. I'm going to be doing the bee and the dragonfly. I'm going to leave out the butterfly for now. And in a probably like a couple videos back, I did prep these. So we put on the Tim Holtz tissue paper and I just took these colors and kind of blended them on there and then I floated the corners to brighten them up and bring up the, um, the color a little. But now she has us putting a wash of asphaltum over it to antique it. So basically this is what I'm doing. I'm going to recreate this a little bit smaller and just show you how I got it. So we're going to go with a wash. Now a wash is mostly water and um, let me get, I'm just getting a flat brush. This is a little small. Um, and you're just going to put it on there and you got to let it dry. Boy, my brushes are hideous. How are these in the good brush section? Oh man. I might just use um, a big, a super big brush. That might, oh, here we go. I'm going to use this. This is a, actually a wash brush. So it's, it's probably for um, watercolor. So I took this little puddle of asphaltum and I loaded this with water. And I'm just going to make a wet, a very, very washy puddle over here. So there's not a lot of pigment in this. I'm going to make it a little bigger so that I have enough to do both of the ATCs. And I'm going to rinse my brush before I go to my piece. I need, um, I've been, I bought these shop towels. I never, I know a lot of decorative artists do like these shop towels. I think they're a little more absorbent so they don't get wet as fast. That's my thinking anyway. But I always fold it up anyway, so I have it four ply there. I'm going to do two of them. And because I'm going to blot my brush, and then I'm going to load it up in this puddle. And I'm just going to cover the whole entire ATC with it to give it an antiqued look. See, I probably need more. Thought I made enough. And I didn't rinse my brush first, and I have a lot more pigment in my bristles because of it. So it's fine, though. I am okay with it. But when you do a wash, you put it on there, and then you leave it. You can't play in it like there's a couple bubbles and that's okay I'm gonna leave it let it dry in the meantime I've already gone ahead and traced out the pattern so in the packets they always give you a pattern well usually so I've shrunk it down and I've traced it out into ATC size so here's the B and here's the dragonfly and after the after we do that, I'm going to trace this onto the pattern, on the pattern onto the piece, so I'll be able to see that. And then I'm going to base coat everything. And I think I'll come back after I'm base coated, and I'll show you the details. I, I mean, you know how I do this. I usually will um, show you some of the base coating, um, but this has to dry. I guess I could speed it up. Let's speed it up. I'm going to tell you exactly what her directions say. It says, um, age the panel with several washes of thinned asphaltum, keeping the darkest value to the outside edges, then darken it a little in the corners with soft black. So I'm going to, the next one I'm just going to float 
the whole piece. This seems dry. That one's not quite dry. Yeah, this is dry. So I'm going to and I'm going to use now I'm going to use this is a new brush I just got. But I'm going to use my um I'm not going to use that right now. I'm just going to get this with water again to keep it really sheer and I'm going to quarter load my brush and I'm going to load it so that the darkest color just stays on that left hand side and I'm going to go around the whole piece keeping the darkest color to the outside edge and see a float if I go over it I'm going to take off what I put down so usually maybe doing two sides at once is uh, how you're going to get that best the best result because if my brush touches wetness it'll come off and a quarter load again nice dark color in the and I'm going to do both the long edges first right up against the edge and then I'll do this side Kiwi's with me. Can you hear her making that noise? What are you trying to say, Missy? Let that dry, and then I'm going to do these other two sides. Kind of like when you would ink the edges of your stamped image, right, with, with your Tim Holtz Distress Inks, but I get the same look with the, with the paint. So it looks antiqued love it and then I'm just gonna do the corners with the soft black so you see how it looks really dark in the corners so I'll do that but it takes a minute because you have to let this dry in between so this one I'm still waiting for that to dry so that I can do the short edges Just darkening that up a little bit. That looks good. All right, and then it said to darken just the corners with soft black. And then I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to trace on the patterns. And I'm going to do, uh, it says the leaves and branches, they're basically just outlined and then I'm going to um, shade them. So I'll do them first. Yeah, this is good. All right. Um, I got to dry it and then we'll do the soft black just in the corners. I'm using palette paper. This is pa called palette paper and it's kind of like a shiny um, material that your brush can just slide over the surface. That's how I like to load my brush. That's pretty dry, so let's just put the soft black in the corners. And you can just start kind of down a little bit here and put it down and then work your way up. So I'm kind of picking it up as I go, but um, I, get the, I get the desired result. So I just put it down and then walk it to the edge, kind of push it to the edge. I don't know. It's just the way I like to do it. You can get the color down there and then you, I don't know. That looks good. It looks grungy all of a sudden. I like it. Soft black is a good color. I like soft black. It's kind of
kind of like a, I don't know what I would consider. It's a brownish black. We just got some Ikea furniture yesterday for um, Joe's man cave. He has a little office now in our dining room area. Anyway, the color is called black brown. And this really, the color of the lake, we got this, the similar, um, the calyx, I think it's called. Anyway, it's called black brown. And this, that's what this reminds me of, because there's like, it's black, but it has like a brownish tint to it. So I think that looks nice and antiqued. So I gotta let that dry. And then I'm gonna trace everything. So basically, I'm gonna take my tracing, let me get a different APC. These are already painted. And I'm going to line it up on here. So take this little dragonfly and line it up. Then I need to find my, this is called transfer paper um, or graphite. And I don't have it ready. Here it is. I just keep it all. This is really old. I probably need to get some newer pieces because the they're just used up. Like, look, there's barely any like blackness to it. Um, but I'll find a piece that has some that has some darker lines. This is so worn out. And once you have it in place, you want to lift up your tracing paper and put this under. Make sure it's on the right side, and then I'm going to trace the lines so that they come out onto my um, ATC card and then I'm going to base in some stuff. We'll do the, we'll do the um, leaves and um, twigs first because they're super simple. It's just line work and I think I'm going to use my rigor which I'm very excited about. I bought a new brush and I can't wait to try it. All right so I'll be back. I'm going to trace that on and I'll be right back. So basically I'm going to do the B I line up the ATC with the pattern and then I'm going to take my tracing paper and slide it underneath between the two. And I'm holding here, I can tell that it's covered and then I'm just going to, I'm pressing pretty hard because the wood is hard. Sometimes if you're painting on a soft surface or even if you were using paper, the stylus can will dig in to the surface, so be careful. Um, this ATC is pretty sturdy and it's really just because I want my line to show up because I'm uh, not too sure how these lines are up. There's a nice leaf over here. If the lines are going to show, especially because the background has lines on it already. That's pretty good. I can see everything. I'll zoom in. Oh, I just shifted. No, I don't think I did actually. I'm just going to make sure I didn't shift. Okay, no, I did. I want to get it back over and just center the B. And um, on a normal project, there would be outline lines, then there would be detail lines. But for this particular project, I'm going to put all my lines uh, right now. I'm going to put his little feet, the wings. But like if it was a face, you wouldn't need to trace on the features of the face because you're going to, oh, this is, see, this is much harder to see. So I will base coat this off camera. And I'll do, I'll do the other one on camera. I'll just do the dragonfly today. Anywho, um, so as long as you have, now he has a bunch of little legs. As long as you have the main outline lines, you're, you're going to be able to get your first layer of paint down. And then you can add the details after. All right, I think I'm good. Not necessarily for for to do on camera, but I can because all of those lines from the um, map underneath are very confusing. But this one I think will be good with. 
So I'm going to go back to my directions and it says the leaves and branches are outlined with a rigor and thinned asphaltum and a soft black mix. So these two colors, I'm going to use my new brush. And this is just a brush that I decided to try because Tracy recommended it's called a rigor, a number two rigor. But it's basically like a liner brush. And I'm going to use the paint on my palette. I'm going to take a little bit of the brown and a little of the soft black and just mix them. And add a little water because she said thinned. And I'm going to rinse my brush. And I'm going to move some things and bring you down here. And I'm going to make, it says to outline them and then shade at the base of each leaf and down the center vein with a float of asphaltum. And we're going to highlight with white. And then it says sketch around the leaves with the gel pen. Uh, light sketchy lines. So that's why I got the gel pen too. So I'm going to go into that mixture we just made. I'm going to do some of these leaves. I know it's going to be hard for you guys to see, but let me see if I can. Oop, wrong color. I don't know what happened there. I lost, there's no pigment. I always keep a Q-tip by my side when I'm painting. That way you can take off whatever you don't like. See, I think there's a hair that is keeping, if you look at the tip of the brush, there's a little hair right here that's keeping the tip of the, of this, keeping me off the surface. Oops. I don't like it. Let's try that again. I like to take off, like do a landing strip. That little hair is really not helping me very much. I'm just letting the brush do the work. You don't have to um, get it perfect because it, you want it to look like it's hand painted or else I would just do this with a pen, right? So then I think there's like a couple, oh, there's a leaf that goes underneath the dragonfly over here. And I'm going to leave it like that. And then there's like a branch right here. And that's basically it for those. But I'm going to outline all that with a um, pen. So let's see. That looks pretty good. Let's see if I can see them enough on here. Yeah, I can. I think it will make you guys nuts to try and follow these lines. So what do you think of the rigor? Is it, is it good, doing a good job? I think it is. I think, what am I, what am I sent, what is my, I feel like, like what I mean is why is this different from a liner brush? Why does she choose the rigor over, say, a script liner, something that's very similar shape? I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. It's definitely got a little more thickness to it. Like, I mean, there's more, it seems like there's more anyway, hairs. It doesn't, uh, my liner seems like it has fewer hairs. This is a little more dense. And there is a weird hair on the, on the tip of this, though, that I will either cut or because... I do that with my own hair grown on my head. If Sometimes if my hairs are not lined up, I 
take a pair of scissors. I drive my Lowy Lois nuts because I like I cut it. She's like, ah, okay. This seems like it's. Does that look good? I think it looks good. So that was that. And she wants us to float. And I'm going to use my new floaty then. I'm going to use my new. This is faux squirrel. So I haven't used it yet. This is my very first time. But she wants us to shade the leaves. I'll do this one first. It says shade the base of each leaf and down the center vein with a float of asphaltum. So here I'm corner loading. Ooh. Feels good. Ooh, it feels real good on the palette paper. I'm just getting it full of water again, making sure that it has, uh, it's all the way wet, like all the bristles are wet since that's the first time I've really put it in water. All right, so I'm gonna do the base of each leaf. And there's a base here. And then it wants me to do up the center as well. I'm gonna let that dry first. Oh, I like it. It is, it's smooth and I like it. I'm very happy. I could have erased my tracing lines, like if I didn't go over the line. Once you paint on top of the graphite, it's not as easy to get off. That makes sense. Doesn't that look cool? And then I'm going to go up. She said to go up the center line. And then we're going to highlight the opposite with a thinned float of titanium white. I love adding white to this then. All right, let's see. Hi, Kiwi. This is titanium. Just make sure you shake it. I'm going to see what color the leaves. Base the body with carbon black. The wings are white. Good. So I will get this out and I'm going to probably be basing the wings of my dragonfly and the wings of my bumblebee with that. Base the body with carbon and base the wings with titanium white. Doesn't have to be fully opaque, she said, so it can be a little sheer. That's exciting. Um, because then you see some of that color come through. I'm going to go with, let's just finish the leaves because I think they're probably dry now. And I'm going to go up this like side. I don't know if it's even noticeable. It's noticeable, right? How does that make it a difference? It makes one side of the leaf darker, right? So I put the color up against the vein and just pull it up. So color up against the vein and water is on the surface too. I'm going to let those dry. I'm going to get, oh, should I use my new filbert? Now this is my, now this is my old number four, but I got a new brush that is called um, a dynasty. This is it. The dynasty. Look how this brush is all splayed apart, and this one is so nice and new. I can base coat with this, though. Let's see if I can base coat, because when you get it wet, it starts to stick together again. And I'm going to base in my, and I'm, but see, see how it's coming apart like that? You don't want your brushes to do that. That's, I mean... Ideally, it would all stick together. This, she said, doesn't have to be opaque. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with sheer on these. I think on the first piece, I didn't read that direction, and I just gave them. A, I totally like filled it in. 
opaque like I did a couple coats but I'm lazy painter and if I can get it to look nice so if by that I mean this is a nice thin coat and it's not gonna look like um, gloppy or see I can't really see here we go the lines are really hard to see because of all that background line work um, the Tim Holtz I used um, Tim Holtz postal or something something like that and um, has maps and architectural drawings and stuff but oh no it doesn't not this one this one has mail stuff stamps and postal stuff yeah yeah what am I saying this one has architectural I use the other one with which is um, melange it has architect stuff music notes and like something French some type of French writing. So see, I knew that S was going to be dark, but I knew that I was going to be making um, the wings. I was going to put the wings right across that. So I am just using a delicate touch and thinned titanium white. So it's not going to be opaque. I'm going to leave it like this. I don't want it to be, oops. Uh, I don't know. I think I'm going to leave it like that. I don't know. It kind of looks... But see, like, wings are sheer, right? They're not opaque. Well, one would think. Um, I've not studied. I love critters, though. Bugs. I even saved the yellow, or a wasp, that a hornet that was in my house, and he was stuck in the window. Like, he was in my... It's like a kind of like a, what do they call those windows that you can like put plants on? Anyway, it goes out and he was just so sad because he was stuck and he wanted to go home and he didn't know how to get there and I let him, I let him out. See, that looks cool. I think I'm going to leave the wings sheer. Uh, boy, that's hard to see. Kiwi, stop. Kiwi's like digging at me. I can't see this one. I know that's that. I might have to retrace this with um, my white. Yeah, this map underneath is very distracting. So let's go in with a little of the titanium white and highlight the leaves though. It just says to highlight opposite the shadow with a float of thin titanium white. So I'm just going to go corner load and load my brush and I'm just going to go up here and do the tips of the leaves. Now when you do this the color stays on the edge and all the bristles are on the surface because you need the water too so that the paint can float down the brush. Hey! Stop! Stop! Sorry, my bird is irking me. Uh oh. Now that was just a little dark, but I like a dark float. I think it looks pretty. Doesn't that make it pop? OMG. I'm just going to get more water on my brush. Do the same thing. But see, I'm using all the bristles, not just the tip. You slide it up there. coming along nicely and then I'm going to outline I'll do all the outlining at the end when it's like really sketchy and good so I think should I I think I'm going to leave it like that it's very sheer but I kind of like it it doesn't have too many like um ridges I see one white line there but I think once I've spattered it and everything so the next well let me do the um what color is the outline the body with carbon black and two sections with white gesso. So she says white because I want to do yellow, but that's on the B. But for the dragonfly, 
um, mix diazepine purple shade the left side of the body. Oh, that's for the body. But for the wings, cobalt teal hue. I didn't have that. That's a color that's um, one of the Deco Art Media colors. I think I'm going to use just this Bahama Blue. And I'm just going to float. Maybe I should paint the body first. I need carbon black and I don't have carbon. I think I'm just going to use soft black then. I'm going to use the soft black and I'm going to use a number three round or two round. Let's see what this is. It's by plaid. I can't even tell. But it's a it's just a straight round like brush because then I'll be able to get the body of this B. I think I want to try this um, soft black. What did I call it? But she wants carbon black, which I would consider it a charcoal. Um, because I have charcoal. It's a little grayer. It's a little more like um. Oh, uh, what is that color that everybody? It's uh, gunmetal. But you know what's going to be great about this is when I highlight and shade, I can use right straight black and it's going to pop on this. So I'm just putting this down so that I can see where I'm going. It's not exact. And... He has little legs. I gotta find them. So I'll go off camera. Oops. Definitely have your Q-tips ready because probably should have done the body first. And then you can uh, take off anything. And his little arms, I'm not seeing where they are. But I'll go off camera and I'm gonna base my bee and I'm gonna base my dragonfly. And these will be done super quick. Alright, I'll be right back. All right, I'm back and I went and ate, so I'm not sure where I left off. Oh, I want to add my yellow now. On Tracy's, on the direction she says to base in the parts of the bee that are yellow with um, gesso. And I, gesso has tooth and it's kind of like um, gritty almost. So I just used the titanium white, the same color that... Um, I did the wings and stuff in and then I went back after I did this and made sure I had everything because it was really hard to find the lines with this background. Um, the map lines all showing through it was really a bit difficult but see when you base under when you do an undercoating with white um, you don't have to do as many coats of yellow to get it opaque. And I think, I mean, it's bright. Um, once I shade it and everything and highlight it, I don't think we'll need much more. I think the yellow, all you have to do is one coat like this when you've done an undercoating. See, it's a little weird shaped. This one kind of has more of a waist, like a little, it's just bigger, so it was easier. And then there's these other sections on there. But I don't think I'm even going to put those. I'm just going to give them a head and like some fuzzy shoulders like up there. But let me, um, I'm going to erase, even though we're going to do lines around the um, wings with the gel pen, I'm just going to take this and just erase the visible. This is just a regular like white eraser. It's called Pentel Click Eraser. There's some people really love a kneaded eraser, a pink eraser. I've used a, I think it's called a gum eraser before. They all work pretty well. And I'm thinking I am just going to leave it with the sheerness. So let's go ahead and put the Bahama Blue out. And I'm just going to float a little bit of that at the ends and the tips. So kind of like, I mean... That looks cool. I think like a different color, like a, um, 
metallic color would look really pretty. But you know what? I'm just going to follow. That's one of the great things about following a pattern packet. You don't have to think. You don't have to add anything. You just do what they tell you. But I love sparkle and all right, shimmer. So let's see what this looks like because I didn't really... I think, I think, you know what, I'm going to try it. Let me just, I'm going to change it up. I'm going to grab, I, this is my go-to color for dragonflies. It's called Halo Blue Gold. Wait. Halo Blue Gold. And it's such a cool color. So let me just, look at it. I mean, it's kind of got a little green, blue, and gold all in one. I'm going to use that, and guess what? Um, I've decided that I really like this faux squirrel brush, so I may be ordering a few more of these, but let me go in. I'm going to quarter load, get a little bit of that, load my brush, and we'll shade with this color. It more of my own. I feel like painting the whole wing with this. Oh man, you see it? Oh man. This is uh, Lemire by Jacquard. It's a light body metallic acrylic and I think they're meant for fabric painting. I should have started at the bottom and just made my way up to the corner. It's on the background a little. I'm just going to kind of take it off. And you can do this whole, the whole um, wing with one flute pretty much. Come on. That is so good. Okay. See, I can, I have so much on this brush right now. It, I like this brush a lot. Oh yeah. That just made it pop in. I just really want to do the whole wing like that. All right, so how did we do the bumblebee? Is he similar? Should I do the same thing on the bumblebee? I don't know if bumblebees have like a shimmer to them, but you know dragonflies do. I think I need to get more of these. I didn't love how the S because the it looks fine with the white, but the black, like his little arm right here, you can't really see as much. Well, you can see it. All right, let's. I'm gonna do the wing of the bumblebee too. Let's see what it looks like. And there's two wings. You have an upper wing and a lower wing. So this is just the upper wing. I think it looks good. I think they're going to have, because I think it called for that um, turquoise color on both of the wings. It's all the same pattern packet, so she used the same colors. Um, see, on this one, I kind of put it on the tip and under. Like, if this one's supposed to be underneath, I think that's kind of what I did on that one. So I'm going to take the paint and I'm going to go under the wing and up against the body. I just want to make sure that's a little dry. And it would be darker, I say to myself, as I make it dark. I had a beer at dinner and I feel like I'm a little buzzed. It was a giant beer. Um, I like the, uh, what is it called? The, um, I can never, ever, 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 it's the apple orchard or whatever it's called. Um, something apple ale, angry orchard, right? I think I'm going to do this tip a little bit. I mean, I think it looks cute. 
So then for the yellow, I think it's, I think I used burnt sienna for his little yellow parts. Shade the yellow portions of the thorax with vermilion, which I don't know, I don't have that. And then it says float over this with asphaltum, highlight the lower edge with a fine line stroke of thin titanium white. Base float, wait, base each of the smaller bees. See, she says smaller bees, there are none, okay. I'm gonna use my go-to, which I love for a brown, is um, burnt sienna. It's like a reddish brown. I could probably just go right in there with asphaltum and, and skip. A lot of times um, in decorative painting, you'll do multiple colors of floats to get a finished um, piece. But I'm just going to do it with burnt sienna first. Maybe I'll use asphaltum and maybe I won't. And I'm just going to do the... See, he doesn't look round. Kind of makes them look a little round. Isn't he cute? Alright, these guys are pretty much done. Except for the black and the line work. So let me read what it says to do. Base the body with... Buh, buh, buh. Don't say. It says... That's so weird. Base the body of the bee with carbon and two sections of the thorax with gesso. Once dry, apply yellow. Shade the yellow, but it doesn't say what to do with the black. I definitely did something, but you know what? I bet you I got the directions from um, the other thing. So I'm just going to go back to the dragonfly. Because if you look at this, you can tell that I definitely highlighted at least... See, like the shine. I think I highlighted. So I'm going to look at the um, dragonfly directions. And it says, base the body with carbon and each of the shadow dragonflies as well. Base the wings. All right. Yeah, yeah. Shade each wing. Yeah, yeah. Sketch around. Mix a little dioxazine purple with a touch of titanium white. Shade the left side of the dragonfly's body with a float of diapsazine purple. Then highlight each segment with a dry brush of the highlight mixture. Add a final highlight to each segment with a stroke of titanium white. So I'm going to add a little bit of diapsazine purple with a touch of titanium white. And it, so instead of shading, it's going to give it a little... I should... Maybe I could use the... Nah... I'm just going to follow, and I don't have, I'm just going to use Americana Thiopsazine Purple. It's not, she might be using a different uh, brand. And a little bit of the white. And I really need to be gentle with this. So I could, I could go down. I am, I'm going to go to my smaller angle brush. I don't know what size. It's a little, like maybe a one, a quarter inch. I'm just going to brush load, so let me come out, brush mix, I mean, oops, so a little bit of the purple, a little bit of the white, and just brush mix it, oh, such a beautiful color, but then I'm going to leave it there, I'm going to rinse my brush, and come in and pick it up, so that it's very sheer on my brush, I don't have a ton, and I'm just going to use this as a guide. I'll go in a little bit. Basically, I just want to get... Mm, so, like... Here, let's start at the bottom. So cute. Oh, come on. And then, I think, like... Right here and here. Oh, 
that's basically it. And then I put little white shine lines, but I mean, it definitely makes a difference. I can't really see. I'm going to try and brighten up these um, arms here because you can't really tell that they're there. Eh, that's it. Then I'm going to just have to do outlining to make it pop. So I'm going to do the same thing with this guy. Let's see if I did. Well, it looks basically the same. So I'm just picking up that mix that I put down. I'm going to do a little on the sides. Um, just keeping it simple. Maybe, what about like his little face? He doesn't have a stinger. Do bumblebees have stingers? I don't know. I think I kind of want to put one now. Um, I think we're ready for, oops, ready for line work. Oh, I didn't do his little arms. Hold on. It makes his arms pop. If I put a little... And I wasn't using the whole brush for that. I mean, I don't know if you could tell I got paint on my hand. But in certain, when it's such a small, tiny, teensy little spot, like these little arms, I don't need to use my whole brush. I just want to get a little bit of that highlight color. Then I'll come back with a tiny little brush. And um, I think I kind of want to do it. Make the head pop a little. But I think I brought the legs out a little bit. But I am going to do line work. That is a weird looking bee. Kind of looks better like that. Alright, I think they're done. And then we have to do line work and a word. So let me see how big my words are. See how big the word, it says dream big on here. I'll probably use a piece of... Um, Tim Holtz's chit chat because I can put just dream. Here they are. These words are way too big. Yeah. It's because she, when she prints out the pattern, when you print out the pattern, you get the words on there. But I think I'm just going to use chit chat. That's what I did on these two. I used create and dream with the black chit chat and this chit chat. So let's see. I'm going to try my new pen, which is the no, Uniball Vision, no, Uniball Signo DX. It's a point, 0 0.38, so it's a very fine point. I'm going to tell you what she says to do. Uh, for the line work, it says... Outline the leaves and branches with the rigor. Highlight the opposite side. Okay, then it says, sketch around the leaves with a gel pen. Light sketching around an object softens the edges without affecting contrast. Um, and then again, for the bumblebee, it says, sketch lightly around each wing with a gel pen. Two or three times around will do. If the pen goes up onto the white, that's a good thing. So don't sweat it. So that's how she likes it. Um... We did the diapsazine. Add a final highlight to each segment with a small stroke of titanium white. So let's do that because I did do it on here. I'm going to take, I'm going to use my little liner brush. Um, I thought I had, I'm going to use this guy. I could use this one I just got. See, this is so short so short. Let's see what that looks like. The reason a short bristle isn't as effective for me is because it doesn't hold as much paint or as much water. So, I don't know. It feels like I'm reloading and um, okay, so I'm going to go in and I would consider this a spotter. I don't know why, but um, it does the trick. So I'm just going to put a little Basically, it's a shine line. Um, when 
she does the, uh, did I put any on my, see this is so small, but that helped. When she does the um, phone stands, she put little blings. She put a bling on each section of the um, dragonfly. So for this one, she, I just did it like here, here. See, it's holding a lot. I don't have to keep reloading. That's the basic. Let's see if I want to put it on the little legs too. I think it helps them show up. I think I could even put it across the white. All right, so we're going to do the line work. I'm going to use this guy, and I'm going to try and just be gentle. It seems to be working, and I don't know how well it's going to go on, you know, a wooden painted piece. So let's just try it. And, oh, Joe's flying his drone, I can tell. Oh, yeah, this is very. And she said two or three times around is good. Okay. I always move the piece, guys. If you feel uncomfortable, make yourself comfortable. Don't turn your body or your hand. All right, and then she definitely has it like around here too. It's still coming out. It's not writing as well over this, but let's see. I think she just does it like scribble scrabbly. I should I think I'll fill that in because it's kind of a branch. Alright, I'm not sure where it stopped, but I'm using the gel pen and look. I outlined the wings and I think it looks really good, like sketchy. I'm gonna I'll do the dragonfly with you guys, but it seems like the gel pen is definitely um, a good mixed media pen. Like it's not stopping the pen from going. Like watch, here I go. I'm gonna do I just have the big one near me so I can kind of judge, but it she says she likes it sketchy and if it um, gets on the white, that's okay too, so I'm kind of not really caring if I go out of lines. And it seems like the gel pen is working, like on the paint, I mean, like the mixed media. So it works on the paper awesome, and then it didn't seem to pick up there, but I go back and, um, you know, maybe because it's a, a metallic paint too, I don't know. Sometimes the different textures don't cooperate as well either and see like sometimes you want a really fine line and you could do this with a paintbrush I could do it with my food ball or my um, uniball my uniball vision but that looks cool um, I could I gonna I'm gonna go out outline the leaves too And the branch. Seems like I picked up, like I left a white line there instead of paint. Because I push hard, too. I'm not gentle, guys. And you probably do want to just let the ball, of the roller, go over the piece. So that's it. Now i got to find some words. I think the words that she would have... Um, you know what, I'm going to outline the B too, because there's not really any, there, at least just there. There was nothing to kind of hold in the yellow, but I want to put something like Be Fierce and like Dream Big. These are kind of big, the words, they're not as big as those, it's one word. I, I have Fly. Um, so I'm going to go away and look for, see I have this, this is kind of cute, there's dream, I might have big. So I'm going to look through and find some words and I'm going to adhere those with 
Mod Podge, or actually I have Collage Podge, then I'm going to spatter. So just a little bit of spatter. I'll be back. All right, I found, this is called Small Chat by Ideology. It's Tim Holtz, and it's more like a sentence or just a, a phrase instead of words. And I picked Make It Happen and be brave and I just I should have put be brave on the B but you know um, but it's not spelled B E E anyway so it's whatever and I just used um, collage podge and I'm gonna shade that we're gonna spatter but the one last thing I can do is take some of this asphaltum and shade behind the wings so when I do this on my art journal pages, it always makes everything kind of connect to the background. So I'm just going to take it and go behind, kind of underneath the wing, see if it changes it. Maybe just down this side of the dragonfly body. It's kind of dark down there, so let's look. I mean, I can definitely see that. I'm going to do it on the other side as well. Sometimes it's very subtle, but... Um, so I'm just putting the color under the wing. And it kind of sets the, the bug onto the background instead of it being above it. I'm going to do it on the B too. I, I mean, it's not totally noticeable, but whatevs. And let's just stick it. Alright. I kind of want to go above here too, like lost a lot of the brightness of like the this is actually fuchsia no this is fuchsia this is diop diopsazine whatever it looks cool so I'm going to take that too really gently and lightly go right along the bottom of the word hopefully it's just to blend it in it's too bright And then we're going to spatter. Um, this was nice and calm. It wasn't, I went too crazy with, she had us do like two or three colors on, on the, um, <clears throat> I'm just looking to see if it's um, done because I don't want to, I'm going to put a coat of my podge, well, collage podge on top. Now, I like to use, a spatter brush for spatter. I have it and that's why I use it. I've used a fan brush a ton. I love a fan brush for mixed media and stuff but for this, can you see those lines? Yeah. For this I'm going to use the fan brush and she wants me to use asphaltum. Thinned asphaltum. I might do it with the soft black I think. Yeah, I'm going to use the soft black instead. I've got enough brown going on. And so I'm going to put a little bit down, and I'm actually going to apply it to this brush with a flat brush. So I'm taking this flat brush, getting it with some water, and I'm going to load it with the soft black, and then I'm going to kind of paint the edges. And, you, you know, it's not a great choice of color because you can't really see it. This has just been the best way that I've found to load this brush. I mean, you could roll it in the paint. Um, but I think I'm going to be okay. I'll put these together. And you can kind of see. It makes really fine spats. I guess if I were to put the paint on thicker, like uh, gloppier, it would be thicker drops. But... It's just subtle. 
I think if I were to, I'm going to roll it in it. I'm going to roll it in it. Let's see. Do I want to wet this? Um, I kind of do. So I just wet, up. I'm spatting my own shirt. I don't want to spat my shirt. So it can, spattering is messy. It's always messy, but I'm going to do it like that and see what happens. See if I get some bigger spats. Oh yeah. And they're wetter. Oh boy. Oh wow. That's way. Okay. That's enough. Enough. It can be too much, you know. So I'm done. I think. Did I sign these? No. I didn't sign the front. Um... It's an ATC, so I'll put every, all that info on the back. I think I want to take off some of the spatter. This looks a little too messy. Um, I don't like that one. I like it. I hope you like that. They were pretty quick, too. All right, you guys. That's it. Thanks for watching. All right, I just wanted to come back and show. I did edge it with gold. I forgot about that part. And I spattered with a little bit of gold, too. You can't really see it, but I can. Um, and I did a coat. First, I did a coat of collage page. And then I spattered and um, edged it with gold paint. I just used metallic, dazzling metallic, glorious gold. All right. I like it. That's it. I don't know if I lost the bug. Actually, the bee shows up pretty well. I don't know if I see his body as much. I like him though. So now I have four hand painted ATCs. I'm going to keep going. Thanks, guys. Bye.